Beautiful family, how are you guys doing this fine day? It is a first day. It is a sun day on the Gregorian calendar. It is a first day on our Creator's calendar. And I hope you guys are well. I hope you guys are blessed. I hope you guys are in the Word. I hope you guys have already been in prayer today. I hope you guys are seeking our Creator. I pray that you guys have called upon the name of our Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach, and that, as most people know him as, Jesus the Christ. But I hope you guys have done that. I hope there's there's no other name under heaven by which man may be saved. And so it, salvation begins at the stake and the, the, the blood of the firstborn son of our creator who came and died and was resurrected three days later. And by his blood, we are healed. And by his stripes, we are healed. And it is a honor to be able to represent. And I don't even know if represents the right word, but maybe parrot. I love to parrot the word of our creator. And it is a crazy world that we are in right now. It is, without a shadow of a doubt, the end times. We are in a world where a lie has been spun. And the majority of the world, 80% of the world, has bought the lie. Hook, line, and sinker. And now everybody's dying. And nothing will stop what is happening. And it's good news for the people who are seeking the kingdom. Because when we are seeking the kingdom of our creator, his power is here. And there are tremendous amounts of things that one can get fearful of. And as I have often let it consume me with fear, I've stopped these days because <clears throat> there is, there's nobody bigger and badder and more in control of everything than our creator, Yahuwah, Yad Heid Vad Heid. I am that I am. And he has everything under his control and we will be tested. Every single one of us, we must understand we will be tested. Things are going to happen to us that we do not understand and the powers of evil will dominate us more than likely. And it is all said and it has all been written and we must come through with these tests. We must be challenged. We must rise to the occasion and we must go to whatever ends it takes never to deny our creator his son. And what you see before you is a thing that most of us have had and signed a few times over our lives, maybe, maybe some more than others. And what you're seeing before you is, is a, a rental contract. It is an agreement from a landlord to a tenant. And in this agreement are certain things. You shall pay me on this day. You shall keep the house in order. Inspections can be done here. It is a back and forth. Rent is due this. The deposit is due here. You will get a deposit back upon inspection when you leave. Everything that you're going to agree to under living conditions and under the penalty of, at the very least, having your credit dinged. But you are taking a financial residential contract and you would be signing this. You would fill in the address, you would fill in any kind of dings or wings or something in the house if you saw the door unhinged or you would have it fixed prior to this. You would, you would not sign this contract until you're happy, right? And the landlord is not going to present a contract that he is not happy, that he is willing to defend in the event that you will go against this contract. Now, we have all been given a contract we have all been provided with a contract and this contract is life or death this contract is a simple agreement that our forefathers abram isaac yaakov or his in the english abraham isaac and jacob they all kept this 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 contract right it is a contract that our creator has given to us and he spent his precious time getting it to us, keeping it ordained so it doesn't get destroyed, and delivering it to every single one of us. And if not, <laughs> who does not have access to the word of God? 
You can find it literally anywhere, and people have them in motels. They've been in motels for years and years and years, right? It takes the special moment and the special time and that special occasion that you actually read the Bible. But we've been entrenched into a doctrine of lies, a doctrine that says this contract that is before us doesn't exist. These people have told us and they've, t they've bet our soul on it. We are believing a lie instead of taking a contract that is not just an, a very equal contract, but it is an amazing contract. In fact, it doesn't cost us a single dime. This contract that our creator has provided to us doesn't cost us anything. It costs us faithfulness. It costs us faith. It costs us a little bit of being peculiar, a little bit of being a little weird, right? Because we're set apart. We don't want to look like the rest of the world and smell like the rest of the world and taste like the rest of the world because we are set apart, peculiar people. That is what the laws of God have provided to us in a contract. And most of us have said, we don't want this contract. We will eat our bacon. We will bless our pork. We will eat whatever food is we want. We will do what we want because we are rebels. And you know what? There's one other who is the king of the rebels who came before anybody else and who delivered a very evil message and has been hounding us and afflicting us from the days of old. And that's Hasatan, the adversary, the devil, the one who roams about, the one who afflicts us and the one who hates us. And so in this contract that I'd like to discuss today, it doesn't matter if it is a, to you, a new or renewed contract. It is a contract none the same. Because most of us have never had the opportunity to take this contract, to take a, a life rental agreement that comes from our creator. And I never take stuff out of context when I'm reading this stuff. And our lesson today is in Hebrews, but I have to go back to Jeremiah 31 because I got to talk about this very first. Because when we are talking about Yisrael, we are not talking about the old Jews in, in Israel. Anybody who keeps the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator is Yisrael. You, my friends, my family, we we are Yisrael. We are, the, we are the kingdom family. We are the people that are willing to keep the laws, statutes, and commands and the faith of our Messiah. And we do what the Bible says from front to back. That is the agreement. That is the contract. And so when we are talking about Yisrael, we are talking about us. There's no other definition of there. In the Bible, there's no Baptist and Pentecostal people or Mormons or, or, or Seventh-day Advent. There's none of that. There's the people who call themselves the children of the Most High and they are blessed and they are called the children of the Most High because they are Yisrael. And the only way to become Yisrael is by signing your life away to the contract that Yahuwah has provided to you, which is keeping his law, statutes, and commands. And we don't just have to keep a set of commandments without a benefit. Because not only do we stay alive because we don't eat unclean food and touch corpses and <laughs> pack around dead things, right? Because we know better, because we care the Torah, right? So not only do we have that, but then our creator has said he will bless us. What's good going on in your life? The this fact that we are still alive and breathing every single day is a blessing from our most high. The fact we are not decimated with health problems and even the health problems that we have, are we manageable? Do we thank our creator in absolutely everything? In every pain, in every break, in every, everything, our creator's name is to be praised. There's no other greater name in the universe. There's no greater engineer. There's no greater lover of us than our creator. Even his son is not going to be as much of a lover of us as his dad was. His dad provided the son and his dad provided us. He created us all. He's the ultimate architect. And it is this covenant right here. And I'm going to read this in the, new, in the NIV because it's easier reading, but it's over on the king on the left. I'm also going to go into the Sefer and also the Hallelujah Scriptures as well um, because there is differences in the translations. And I know that some say it's a new and some say it's renewed. Let's read it and we'll discuss it. 31, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Yehudah. It will not be like the covenant that I made covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant though I was a husband to them declares the Lord 
This is the covenant I will make with the people of Yisrael after that time, declares the Lord. I will put in my mind, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord because they will all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Now, when we look at this over in the Sefer, and it says right here in verse 31, and this is where there's some differences, and it, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter if it's new or if it's renewed. To us, it is new. Even if it is a, even it doesn't matter what it is because it's the same covenant for us. This is what we want. And so verse 31 in the Sefer here says, Behold, the days come, says Yahuwah, that I will cut a renewed covenant with the house of Yashrael and with the house of Yahuda. Not according to the covenant that I cut with their fathers to the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Mitzrayim, which by covenant they broke, although I was a husband unto them, says Yahuwah. But this shall be the covenant that I will cut with the house of Yashrael. After those days, says Yahuwah, I will put my heart, my Torah in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their Elohim and they shall be my people. Guys, let's look up very quickly to verse 31 here. There is no house of Gentile. We have two different houses. We have two houses that split and it's, it's two of the 12 tribes of Yisrael. And that's basically all we have left. You have the house of Yahuda and you have the house of Yisrael. You don't have a house of Gentile. If you consider yourself a Gentile, that you are proud to be a Gentile, there's nowhere in the Bible that it says Gentiles make it to the kingdom. We are not supposed to be a Gentile. You are only a Gentile because you have not signed your life to this covenant. You have not taken the covenant of our creator and said, I will abide by his laws, statutes, and commands, and he can be my God, and I will be his people. That's what we have to do, and that's what we have to sign. So, that's it. Let's go into the actual lesson of today, and we're going to go ahead and read this out of the King and the NIV as well. And this is a verse that the Christians, this is a chapter the Christians have used to completely um, denounce and to, to say that they are some sort of different people. But in context, when you read it all, it's foolishness what they're saying because they have never read it. And I was one of those guys who was a fool. I never read it. I was always talking about the new covenant. I'm under the new covenant. The new covenant is for me. The old covenant, that was for the old Jews. It's like I thought that our creator had made a mistake and had gone through all these years of walking and talking and, and spending time with his people just to say, you know, that was a little too hard for those people. I think I'm going to make a different way. And I'm going to send my son. I'm going to have him tortured and killed and bled, bled on the tree. And, uh, you know, by, by that, you can, you can eat that pork. In, instead of that pork killing you because of all the hundreds of different bacteria that can kill you, I'm making it cling. All food is made cling. And while you're at it, go ahead and stop and pick up every dead piece of roadkill along the way. Fry that up and eat it as well. Right? That is how we end up dead. But everybody says, no, that's okay. I want my pork. Let's begin. Hebrews 8.1. Now, the main point of what we are saying is this. We do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven and who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle set up by the Lord, not by a mere human being. Now, guys, they really, really butcher this, this, this Lord. When they say Lord right here, and let's take it over to the Sefer, if it is not all capitalized, a capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, it actually translates back to Baal. Uh, and so... That's why we have to have the correct translations. We have to be able to figure this stuff out. And um, as Emissary of Elohim says, we have to be word nerds and <laughs> literally and try to figure this stuff out. Right. And so um, here, let's let's look at this. And instead of it being the uh, the wrong Lord, which translates back to Baal. This is the correct translation, Yahuwah. So verse two right here, a minister of the sanctuary of the true tabernacle, which Yahuwah pitched and not man. So they've taken the name of the most beautiful name out there and they've, they've ripped it out of every translation ever. And you've got to ask yourself the question why? Because they don't want us to know the name of the son or the father or any of the stuff. Verse three, every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. And so it was necessary for this one also to have something to offer. 
If he were on earth, he would not be a priest, for there are already priests who offer the gifts prescribed by the law. They serve at a sanctuary that is a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. This is why Moshe, Moshe was warned when he was about to build the tabernacle, see to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown to you on the mountain. And so this is very interesting, right? In verse five, it tells us the, the tabernacle and the things that we have, it's a, it's a shadow of the Shemaim, of what is in heaven. And so we can kind of get a glimpse into what, where our creator is and what he has and, you know, the beauty of it. And, you know, his tabernacles is up and the Shemaim is going to be just amazing. It's absolutely going to be amazing. So verse six, but in fact, the ministry Yahushua has received is as superior to theirs as the covenant of which he is mediator is superior to the old one, since the new covenant is established on better promises. Now, this is what the Christians will say. They say, well, we're under the new covenant because the new covenant has better promises. Okay, let's continue on. Verse seven, for if there had been nothing wrong with that first covenant, no place would have been sought for another. Now, the Christians will go again. Oh, the first covenant. See, that there was something wrong with it. We shouldn't have to follow it. We should be able to do what we want to do. And they take this chapter and butcher it. They completely butcher the entire point of this chapter because there was absolutely nothing wrong with the very first covenant except the people broke the laws, statutes, and commands. The people broke their covenant. They didn't pay their rent. They didn't cling up the house like they were supposed to. They, didn't, they blew a hole in the wall. They did not keep the covenant, right? Verse 8, but Yahuwah found fault with the people and said, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Yisrael and with the people of Yahudah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they did not remain faithful to my covenant and I turned away from them. So this is, this is where the Christians will stop. They will never go beyond this. And if you do this, you're only getting part of the point. And the entire point of understanding the scriptures that we read everything uh, to the point we understand it. If we don't stand under the standing of what we're supposed to be understanding, we are not getting it. Verse 10, this is the covenant I will establish with the people of Yisrael after that time. That's now. We are in this time. We are in the end days. This is after the time. This is to you, my friends. Declares Yahuwah, I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. Okay, so my friends, if you're if, if I catch any Christians out there that are listening to this, my friends, the Christians, it says this new covenant, the parts of this new covenant, the, the what we must abide by is that we must keep the laws in our minds and write them on our hearts. What does that mean? Well, first of all, that means that the laws that we have taken and said are in the trash can because our, our Messiah died to fulfill the law and that makes the law no more. That is untrue. And in fact, if we're supposed to write the laws on our minds and write them on our hearts, how do we do that? Well, we do that by studying. We study to show thyself approved unto, unto the doctrine that we're supposed to be reading. We're not understanding it unless we are studying to show ourselves approved. And workmen who needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God, where the Christians will take that right out of context too. They're like, well, the New Testament's for us. You're, you're not rightly dividing the word of God, Jason. And I believe I am because I don't see a reason that we should not be keeping the law, statutes, and commands of our creator. So verse 10, again, I will put my laws in their minds, write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. Let's, let's, that's a powerful verse. Let's read that in a sefer. Let's read that in the version right here. Verse 10, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Yashrael after those days, says Yahuwah. I will put my Torah into their mind and write it in their hearts and I will be their Elohim and they shall be to me a people. I'll finish it up here in the Sefer. And they shall, they shall not teach every man his neighbor. Okay, that's a strange statement, but there's a comma. And every man his brother. Okay, so we shouldn't teach the neighbor or the brother. Because when you say no Yahuwah, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Wow, what a day is that going to be that we don't have to tell our friends and neighbors 
or every brother about Yahuwah because everybody knows about Yahuwah. Those days will come. Zion will come. The king will come. He will reign on Mount Zion. Yahushua is going to reign. He's going to destroy all these real tough guys and all their big battlement and all their armors and the, 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 the new world order that is assimilating right now and trying to slice the throats of the people of the world. That's who our creator's son is going to annihilate. And he's going to do it in spectacular fashion to a point where it's not even going to be a fight. When you control the elements, when you control creation, <laughs> these guys are in toys, they're in toy tanks, and their their technology means nothing to our creator who, who built everything. Okay, verse 12. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins, and their Torah-less deeds will I remember no more. Why won't he remember their Torah-less deeds? Because they are keeping the Torah, right? If you're if you're not, he's, does, he's not saying that you can go and be lawless. He's saying that from the past, like right now, folks, you have hope, right? We have not all come into Torah at the same time. Some of us have taken years. Some have a magical moment, word satanic, but some of us have that moment that we come into the, the, the truth. And the truth is that the Torah has been good yesterday and today and tomorrow and it will be forever. And there will never be a jot or a tittle of the Torah that will ever be gone until heaven and earth pass away. Ever. It is there forever. Verse 13. In that he says, a renewed covenant, he has made the first old. Now that which decays and waxes old is ready to vanish away. And the Christians will, again, they will slaughter this all the way to the end, but they will skip the big important stuff like verse 10. Because nobody has anything unless you're faithful to our creator. Nowhere in the Bible, and I promise you, I don't know how many times I've made it through the Bible or anywhere, I just, I've lost count, but it's, it's quite a few times. And I will promise you, there is no place in the Bible that you can be lawless and be in, in covenant with our creator. You go into captivity if you do not do what our creator says, if you live contrary to what our creator says, he does not walk with you and for sure you will not have blessings. If you're hearing this for the first time, guys, I, I beg you to please pick up your Bibles, to, to find a copy you can read. There's every translation of every Bible has problems by far. If you're new to this, find a version that is easy to read. The NIV and people are going to slaughter me for this, but it is the easiest to read that I believe. And I'm sure there's other easier ones. I just, I, I grew up with that and I, it's easy to read versus the king. The Sefer is great as well for better translation. But at the end of the day, they, they, they have some things that are messed up as well. But every version does. But if you can find a version, find it on your phone. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. My friends, that is a love letter to you. That is a a surgical letter that is exactly to your life that will that will dial in exactly where you should be you will create peace in your life you will find a freedom that you have never had before and you will begin a walk that is a an amazing walk it is a walk that i will spend my days and hours and time telling you guys how great it is i i mean i'm I do this for nothing. There's no, there's, I will never take a dime. I will never take a, a tithe or whatever people call it. I will never take a donation. It's just not here. So I'm telling you, I'm telling you what I see as gold already. I see as my payment has been the Torah itself. I don't need any more payment. I was given the gift of life, the book of life and the son. And it is so good news that this is the Besorah. This is what we should all be telling everyone about. And so guys, I am going to wrap this up. I hope you're good. I hope you are well. I hope you're blessed. And for those that want to see the rest of this in the NIV right here, here it is right here. You can pause it. You can read it. And I'm just going to say much love to everybody out there. I hope this made sense to everybody. And I hope you guys are willing to step out of the world and step into the Torah and step with the Most High and His Son. It's a good life. Much love.